French Angoras. There are four types of Angoras. The ones you might be most familiar with are the English. When they're in full coat, they're literally a pile of hair. You just see a big pile of wool. You can't see their face, you know, they just... And the characteristic of the French is they have what they call clean faces, and they have, you can see their eyes, they have shorter fur on their uh, faces and their ears, their paws. And satin angoras are very similar in appearance to the French, um, but their coat has a lovely sheen. They were developed from the satin rabbit, and it'll have a beautiful satin sheen to it, whereas this is more of a matte appearance. And then there's the giant angora. They are huge. They're very large, and they are wool-producing machines. Every rabbit grows their fiber at their own rate. He is one of my best wool producers, and I clipped him last mm, five months ago, four months ago, and now he's in full coat again and ready to be clipped. This guy mats really easily. My other ones don't, and if the mats, if they're especially if they're right up next to the skin. These are bandage scissors. <laughs> you can find them online, um, but that way I can get in under that fiber and not clip the skin, not cut the skin. But just to take the wool off, plain old scissors. These are $2 children's school scissors from Walmart. And they have kind of blunt tips and they work just fine. Little short um, blades. You don't want anything with a long blade because there's so many curves on a rabbit and you don't want to cut their skin. But so just something like this. These are sewing shears, kids' school shears, and that's just fine. And then when they're being clipped, it's a good time to check their nails. Their nails do grow at an alarming rate, and they're pretty tough. And so that's what I use to take the nails off with. I don't take too much at a time. Just take a lock that's maybe, oh, a fourth to a half an inch wide. Get the scissors in there. And this is the part I was hoping you could get a close up of. This is a trick his, uh, one of the breeders that sold me my other rabbit taught me. Instead of clipping like this, you might cut the skin. Turn the blades up, and that way you're not likely to get the skin. Their skin is like paper. It's very easily cut. And if you leave a little too much on, that's fine. You can always tidy it up later. They're going to be a mess when they're done anyway. It does not come off smoothly. They don't look like a perfectly coiffed and groomed poodle when they're done. You're just taking the fiber off to harvest it. I like to blend it with a little sheep's wool. On its own, it can be spun up that way and it makes a lovely soft yarn, but the yarn itself is not very elastic. It's a little limp and lifeless. Um, knitters will know what I mean by that. Whereas with when you mix it with a little sheep's wool, it's going to give it that elasticity, make it much easier to spin, make a much nicer garment, but it's still going to have that bloom and that soft a halo, fuzzy effect of the, of the Angora. There's no reason why a city dweller could not um, enjoy a little extra income from their fiber rabbits, from their fiber animals, any more than somebody who's rural. Think of it in terms of a luxury fiber and base prices. I have not sold mine yet, and when I do, I'll probably base it somewhere between alpaca and sheep's wool. They can be kept just about anywhere. I keep mine in the house. Yes, it's messier than I anticipated, but they can be kept in the house. I keep them in a spare bedroom. Uh, they can be kept in a garage, a shed that's been converted. They can even be kept in hutches that are outside as long as they're made well enough and protected from the elements and also from predators. Even in the city, we're going to have predators such as dogs, cats, raccoons. Um, those sorts of things. So if they're well protected, they can be in a backyard, they're quiet, they don't make noise, they're not going to bother your neighbors. I check on them morning and evening, uh, groom them, depending on their own needs because every rabbit is different, maybe as little as once a week for this breed, um, until they get to the point where they're needing to be sheared and then their coat starts getting to the place where it needs a little more attention. Um, 
so it's quite easy. Morning and evening feeds or check on them and then grooming once or twice a week.